So a flipped classroom. In First of all, um, no matter what you learn, there's always two stages to learning. There's a stage where you um, <clears throat> get content. Most of the time in a traditional classroom, a, an instructor delivers that content to you, especially in our very intense biology courses where there's just a ridiculous amount of content. And in, as an instructor, like I often have the misconception that if I say it, you understand it. And so the idea of a lecture where I'm standing in front of you and I tell you everything that you need to know, it's very convincing on the instructor end of things to be like, dude, that is amazing. Like I just totally nailed that lecture. It was incredible. And now they know it all. <laughs> but we know that that's not actually the case. And getting new material is just one half of the process of learning. The other half involves doing something, and you have to do something. Most instructors build in the do something as homework. So they give you the content in the form of a lecture, and then they send you home to do homework. And while you're doing your homework, that's when you're actually like messing with the concepts. Well, in a flipped class, we switch that. So at home, on your own, you acquire content. If you have ever been asked to read something before coming to class or like watch something or whatever, if you've been asked to come to class prepared, you did the content acquisition on your own, and then you're going to do something. You're going to have a discussion or you're going to take a quiz or whatever. You're going to do something during class time. Um, that's actually a flipped environment. So lots of people flip. I love the idea of flipping. Like I would do backflips all over the place if I could. I can't, but uh, it would be super awesome if I could. So I like calling my approach the flip, but really all it is is that I'm holding you accountable to coming to class prepared. You acquire content on your own through a video lecture. And my video lectures are just like what you would see like what I would actually do for you. So like this right here, I would actually be talking just like this, and I'd be bouncing around. I mean, I'd probably be bouncing around a little bit more if I were in an actual classroom. Uh, I'd probably be kicking some people. I might spit on someone. I mean, that's all accident. I won't spit on you here, so that's one of the advantages of the video lecture. But then you're going to come to class where we get to, like, mess with the concepts. We get to play games. We get to do case studies. I get to practice exam questions on you. Um, I get to find out what was hard, what, what didn't make sense to you. And so we're doing something during class instead of doing something at home. The awesome part is that, dude, I get paid a lot. and. I mean, maybe not a lot, but I get an awesome, like, livable wage. Like, this is fantastic. And you get more access to me because I'm still giving you the lecture content, but then we have an hour and a half to hang out together. You can ask me any questions you have, things that were tricky, and like I said, I bring stuff for you to do. Um, I think the most important thing to think about as to why did I do this, because I'll tell you right now, it is not easier for me. And it isn't harder for you unless you were going to be a slacker and not ever study for this class, which then you won't pass it. So really, I mean, I don't think that's your goal. I mean, if you're in the class, I assume that you would like to pass it. So no matter what, you're going to have to study on your own. And so I'm just saying study before class. Watch the videos. Take notes. Come to class with some questions. And then during class time, we're going to, um, you're going to get to hang out with me and take advantage of my brain. That amazing thing. So <laughs> look at this. This is so awesome. This is brain activity when people are in a class with a lecture. Now, this is one person, so we could definitely, you know that there are people out there who are super engaged in a lecture. They ask lots of questions. They answer all the questions that the professor asks them, um, but that's like three people in a class of 100. So 
Um, there are some people who, whose brains probably don't look like this, but most of ours do. When we, even if we're writing down things like mad, we tend to have a, a relatively um, steady, it's like, look, oh, <laughs> it's the same brain activity that you have when you're watching TV. And that to me was the kicker. When I saw this study, I was like, dude, I, this is ridiculous. Like, we have to be doing something more substantial in class time, which is why I um, set up the flip the way that I do. One of the concerns that people often have is that it will take them more time. And like I said, it doesn't take you more time unless you are planning not to study. My classes are never classes where you cannot study, unless you're one of those really rare people who really doesn't have to study, and then my class will take you more time. Uh, but you should study anyway, even if you think you don't need to study, which makes perfect sense. Okay, so in, I don't know, thing number seven in this lecture, we're going to talk about setting up a weekly plan so that you have enough time to carry out all the things that you need to do for the class. Um, so before we get there, let's talk a little bit about the course materials. Now we're going to get into the, the nitty-gritty, like what's actually going to happen in this class.